So welcome to another online battle with commentary, with my commentary, with my comment. This time I, I playing again against Bretonia as Vampire account. So in fact, Bretonia and Vampire account are the both top tier factions, and it's always very difficult to play against Bretonia. There is no perfect build. It's always very difficult to play against them. And also, of course, as Bretonia, it's very difficult to play against Vampire Count. So let me show you my army composition. First of all, my infantry line is bam with five units of skeleton warriors. So in fact, I took the skeleton warriors, not the uh, not the with spear. They don't have a anti large bonus, but they perform very well against the most infantry units of Bretonia. So they make a good job and they have shields so they can defend themselves. They have a higher um, melee defense and are shielded from arrows and something like that. So they perform well and they are very cheap. So this is the reason why I took them. The focus is not to go with my infantry after his cavalry. So my infantry should fight his infantry, my cavalry should fight his cavalry. So I don't bring spearmen or something. Like a skeleton for spears at all. At the back line I have grave guards for four units. Grave guards are one of the best infantry units in the game for that price. It's a very good price for that uh, for that performance. They have a real anti infantry bonus of eight damage. 8 damage uh, armor piercing and 30 damage uh, overall normal damage and they are they are heavily armored and with shields so they are very good against everything Bretonia has and everything that is too much for the skeleton warriors the grave guard will clean that up so in fact you are very it's working very well with this composition just when you look at the infantry fight. As a next, I have this Mortis engine. I know it's it's not the best pick. It's not the best unit to bring against Bretonia because it's very easy to focus out with arrows. You can focus it out, or with Royal Pegasus Knights. It's it's not the best option, I think. I think in my, one of my newer builds, I cut them out. So. You, I took something else for that. Yes, and here you can see two units of Felbats. I'm a really big fan of Felbats because they are really fast. They, ma they make actually a lot of damage and you are, have a lot of mobility because you can send them to bowmen, arrow units or cavalry or um, uh, other units. You are very fast, you can react very uh, in a very high speed and yeah also on units with vanguard position you are able to uh, to react very fast at the beginning and I like them very much also they have their <laughs> a natural shield for the mortis engine so the, <laughs> the not all of the arrows will hit the mortis engine but no that's not the reason but yeah to my cavalry I have course two units of blood knights of they are the second best uh, cavalry unit in the game they are very strong and against all with with their anti large bonus very heavily armored and against his great knights royal pegasus knights and so on so uh, in addition i have this unit of black knights they are the cheapest Cavalry unit of the uh, of Vampire Count I think for 700, and of course they perform not very well against any cavalry unit of of Bretonia, but they are very good to sneak behind the the back line of the enemy and uh, fight against his infantry or bowmen or something else. So okay, let us take a look on our enemy. Oh, um, has here one group of Grey Knights, of course, very heavy armored unit and very strong. And I 
think he has another one. So uh, he now here he is. The second unit of granites over here. And here we have Knight, Knights of the Realm. And um, yeah, also very good against large units, large foes. Um, uh, with an anti-large bonus, so I think they, it's okay to bring them in addition to the Grey Knights. Yeah. Also, he has this group of Royal Pegasus Knights, a really strong unit against all all large units, all large foes, and so on. And to his infantry, he has this. Spearman at arms. Also, this spearman at arms. I think two units. Oh, that. Oh, sorry, that man at arms and pole arms. That's, that's the description. There's a spearman at arms with shield. Spearman at arms with shield, and it is a squires. One unit of foot squares, two men at arms and pole arms, spearmen at arms with shield. I think one or two units. One. And uh, pilgrims, battle pilgrims, very steady unit, very good and merely uh, uh, merely fight. They, are, they have no really uh, uh, armor piercing damage, but they're really steady, really tanky and. Very high leadership, very good unit. You can bring them against um, Vampire Count. And also one unit of this uh, Foot Squires, the, the high tier unit of Bretonia with a lot of armor piercing damage and also a lot of armor. And a damsel with uh, Law of Heaven. And his commander is Alberic the Bottom on his bear quest. So I choose my lord uh, to uh, I choose the Red Duke because he's very tanky. He can ride with the Blood Knights, uh, Spam. Also, he have Law of Death. Uh, or and he can a uh, lot of uh, vampire law and he can spawn uh, zombies or or healing and yeah he's a very tanky he's he he's very heavily armored 110 armor and also a lot of he, he makes also a lot of damage weapon strength and so on so it's a very good choose against Bretonia. as you can see on this map it's a little bit <laughs> who gets the hill, who will fight upside and who will fight, have the advantage to fight the enemy upside down. So in fact at this time he was able to uh, su um, supply on the hill, to get the hill, to run on the hill at first, so I had to walk upwards. As you can see he saw my two units of uh, felbats and he started to attack them immediately and of course they have no chance on this so they fell and I sent them away so he, he had to run after them but it's okay it's no problem at all when they when you lose them but in fact I, c I could save them so this you this this unit of flag uh, uh, of bats is heavily damaged but this is very healthy and it's okay So the frontline fight begins. I started to send my skeleton warriors uh, to his infantry units, and also he had no uh, firing units. So the mortis engine is—he was not able to focus the lotus engine out. And yeah, on this point, I see it's it's running very well because I. I will win the frontline fight. He has no arrows. 
no firing units, so I can stay here. I do ha don't have to do nothing. Because he can't do anything. So I can drive in with my mortis engine, drive out, etc. Heal, spawn zombies, etc. And then you can wait at the back line. Here, his Grey Knights and his complete cavalry um, will flank the right side. Or are on the right side and took out one unit of Skeleton Warriors. I would, I would, the plan was to flank him with this unit, but it took him out. So I charged in the front line, and now I saw I can get them. And it's a real advantage if you charge against Grey Knights and you have the, your commander with you, uh, um, the Red Duke in this case. So you can heal, you can spawn uh, zombies at the back line and so on. So it's very good. This is the reason why I take the Red Duke. But as you can see, the fight on the on the front line is running very well for me. Here you have one unit of Skeleton Warriors and one unit of Grave Guard, and they are able to finish the gra uh, the Pilgrims off and um, Foot Squires. You can see this here; it's very good. So, how I told you, this composition is working very well against his uh, infantry units. So, oh yeah, I don't notice the Paladin. He also has a Paladin with him. And is if he don't do anything uh, to kill the Mortis engine, it's almost over because the Mortis engine is very strong, very they have very high speed. Um, so you can change the direction. You can go over here and over here in within seconds, and it causes terror and fear. So the so his units will run out, and yeah, it's you have to do something about this. But he sent his Royal Pegasus Knights in it. But also here I pr protect them with zombies. First of all, of course, they will they will rout or they will get erased uh, almost immediately. But actually, it's it's working well. So on this side, he, he took a lot of damage, but also me. The Grey Knights. Um, made a lot of damage to my blood knights I heal them up as you can see uh, but um, also here is a one unit of gray knights left but he damaged me very heavily and he noticed that and sent one unit of uh, sent his royal Pegasus knights in it and made another charge into my blood knights with his gray knights and knights of the realm and it's always a very, a very heavy fight. The cavalry fight was because the, the blood knights are very strong. Yeah, they are stronger than the grey knights, but uh, he can bring more with him. And also, he have royal Pegasus knights. It's a very, always a very, yeah, it's a very, very heavy fight between the cavalry of Tonya and Vampire Khan. So you can see, I spawn. Uh, zombies at the back line so they cannot get away as that fast so he's trapped here but at this at this situation he yeah, he is his grey knights are performing very well they are still very steady and one of my blood knight unit is not that healthy so you can see here I charged in with my uh, Black Knights. I told you this was this cheap unit for 700 into his backline and his units route. And he noticed that. And of course, this complete flank was is collapsing. But he sent his he sent Alberic right into it. And yeah, he looked. He would like to yeah to save this flank, but it's almost completely routed as you can see here how I told you this is uh, gra grave guards and skeleton warriors and com combined are very strong against everything his foot squares are um, routing and the grail knight the gra pilgrims will follow shortly 
and also here you can see the men at arms um, are shaking and will route within the next set. So he, fo he focused my now on my Mortis engine, but as you can see, um, it's it's a little bit too late, I think. Also here, now this side is collapsing. He, I won the um, cavalry fight. His Grail Knights are shaking, or yeah, they are shaking, and they will rout. And also here, this Knights of the Realm. He have 20 models left, but it's nearly over yeah, now. An ancient power is rising. So okay, this was the match. And yeah, um, I think the the problem is, or the reason why it's so hard for both. Um, for both factions to play against each other is you have to bring bowmen with you so you can focus on with the fire arrows to focus out mortis engines or just blood knights and so on but it's important to save them because as a vampire you can spawn zombies on his bowmen and they it's very it's very difficult but he has no arrow units, shooting units at all, so it was, it was not. He was not able to clean up the mortis engine, and this was the big mistake. But overall, you can see the gray, um, the pilgrims are performing very well, because my uh, skeleton warriors were, were not so not that not that much um, armored, so they killed a lot. 80 and 69. Also, the the foot squires, the, the performance was re re really good. And yeah, I won the Grail Knight. I won the battle against the Grail Knights and the Knights of the Realm. I think because I'm using always the healing spells and spawn zombies in his back line or in his back, and this was the reason I I won this here. But also, I think because he lost the complete infantry fight, and the, also the cavalry will get an, a negative uh, leadership from that, so they will rout too. So Mortis engine is not the best option, cause the most enemy will bring shooting units. So in my newer build, I cut them out and take other units. As you can see, the Grave Guards performing very well against all infantry units in the game. <laughs> and also this uh, performance is very well about Skeleton, uh, skeleton Warriors. So, thank you for watching and let me know your thoughts. And see you next time. Thank you.